So my dear children, in the earlier chapter, we discussed about the first and foremost importance of studying the life cycle of organisms. That was how to control the pest that are fixed, that are going to affect the plantation process. Now, in this chapter, right, as the second use of, right, as the second use of studying life cycles, will be get to know some details about the disease factors. So we'll be get to knowing about these disease factors and how to control the disease factors by using the knowledge of life cycles. Right, so first of all, we'll get to know what do you mean by a disease vector and how can we use this knowledge of studying life cycles, right, in order to control the disease factors. So you are given with the first point here, an agent that carries and transmit pathogens, right? An agent that carries and transmit pathogens, within brackets given virus, protozoa, or bacteria, from an X infectious organism to a healthy organism is called a disease vector. Now, pathogens means I told you in the earlier chapter, what do you mean by a pathogen? Pathogenic microorganism, especially, right? Disease vector is an organism who carries pathogenic microorganisms like virus, bacteria, protozoans from one organism to another organism, right? So that, or that thing is referred as, or that particular organism is referred as the disease vector. So here it is given, mosquito is a disease vector insect. Now mosquito is a disease vector insect means that mosquito is an insect who is going to harm, right? Mosquito is an insect who is going to harm. Actually, it's not harming. It's going to spread diseases by spreading the pathogens, okay? By spreading the pathogens, it's going to spread diseases, right? So, mosquito is a disease vector insect. It acts as the vector of different diseases that human suffers uh, such as dengue and malaria. So mosquito is a disease vector insect. It acts as the vector of different diseases that human suffers. Right? So if you take the mosquito, mosquito is a vector. It carries diseases like dengue, malaria to other humans from one human to another and also right by itself it's going to spread diseases like malaria and dengue and so on right so by studying the life cycle of mosquito we can get to know or we will get to know some knowledge on how to control the spread of my uh, mosquito so here given, to control this disease vector, it is important to know about the life cycle of mosquito. So in order to control the harms, right, in order to control the harms given out by the mosquito, it's important to know about the life cycle of mosquito. So by that way, by studying the life cycle, you know that we can... Uh, control the breeding places we can control the uh, we can control the harms or the damages given by the mosquito so my dear children let's head on to see the life cycle of a mosquito and we'll identify what are the we'll identify what are the or oh, what the stage is the sensitive stage and what are the things that we can follow to stop the breeding places or stop right or to stop the you know the effect given by the mosquitoes on the human beings right so it is given here to control mosquito larva fish species that prey on mosquito larva can be breeded in water bodies such as ponds this is considered as a biological control. This way of controlling pests are eco-friendly and 
spraying chemical to control mosquito. The, then uh, spraying chemical to control mosquito. So here to control mosquito larva, fish species that prey on, right? Fish species that prey on mosquito can be breeded in water bodies such as ponds. So my dear children, this is the life cycle of, this is the life cycle of the mosquito. By looking at this life cycle, you can see that mosquito is also undergoes in a complete metamorphosis. So mosquito is going to lay eggs and from that eggs, larva is coming out. This larva, in this larval stage, right, mosquito larva is going to live completely within the water, right. So this stage is the most vulnerable stage or most sensitive stage of the life cycle of a mosquito, the larval stage. So to destroy mosquito larva, we can breed or we can, you know, like spread fishes who are feeding on mosquito larva. Actually, the specialty is that these organisms or these fish should be small, right? These should be small, right? Like guppy fish. If you take guppy fish, guppy fish is very small in size and it has a colorful body, guppy fish. So it's very, as it is very small, these um, uh, larva of mosquito is a good food for the guppy fish, right? So most of, in most of the ponds, guppy fish could be identified. It's because they, feed on, right? They feed on these mosquito larvae. So to avoid the spread of mosquitoes, guppy fish can be bred within the places that has water, okay? Especially within the places like ponds, where the water is not going to flow from one place to another. So if you have a pond at your home, my dear children, the best thing to control mosquitoes is breeding some guppy fish. And koi fish is also correct, right? Swordtail fish, angel, those uh, fish, like some are smaller fish, not the bigger ones, smaller ones, okay? Those types of fish will feed on, right? The larva, mosquito larva, and it helps to control the mosquito mosquito population okay by controlling the population of mosquitoes we can control the diseases like spreading of diseases like dengue and malaria especially during the rainy season my dear children we have to pay more attention and we have to pay more concern about these things so destroying the places that could be that, that destroying the places that Mosquito lava may seem, right? That is the best thing to, right? To in destroying these mosquito vectors. So best thing to do in controlling disease vectors like mosquitoes it to, is to destroy their breeding places where the lava is going to thrive on, right? So, by looking at these stages, my dear children, it's quite obvious to us that lava stage is the, right, lava stage is the most sensitive stage. If you take the eggs of mosquitoes, there are some mosquitoes, even though the water is not there for a longer time period, these eggs may, you know, like, may seem to be inactive. Like they are dead. But however, when the favorable season comes, in simple, when the, the, when the when there is heavy rain, when water comes, these eggs once again activates to produce mosquito larva. So eggs are like very hard to destroy. Okay, eggs very hard to destroy in the mosquitoes. 
best thing to destroy is the lava mosquito lava as they are very sensitive when like in a small by just by throwing up the water or just by removing the water the mosquito lava will die without water the mosquito lava can't live in normal terrestrial environment the mosquito lava will definitely die if it comes out from the water so they are so our best chance to destroy mosquito breeding places is to destroy the mosquito lava or else to destroy the mosquito breeding places okay like empty cans tins right polythene bags plastic cups yogurt cups in those places water when water is getting collected mosquitoes may lay eggs right then what happens mosquito lava would come out then after that you know what's going to happen mosquito will breed and come out then they will spread diseases like malaria dengue okay to us right so the best and the best method to control these mosquitoes is to destroy those places or else right if you have a pond like structures make sure to breed fishers like right make sure to breed small fishers okay make sure to breed uh, small fishers like guppy fish okay right so you are given list out some diseases that are vectored by mosquito right list out some diseases that are vectored by mosquito collect information about fish species that prey on mosquito larva list the most suitable methods that can be used to control adult mosquito what are the precautions that can be taken by you to prevent mosquito breeding design a poster about controlling mosquito breeding right so you are given with several things several assignment to do one thing given list out some diseases that are vectored by mosquito so you have to list out some diseases that are vectored by mosquito diseases that are vectored by mosquito so like i said my dear children like in the early assignments like i said my dear children i'm going to give provide you two examples each this time i'll be providing only two examples okay so you have to find out even more examples by referring you know you can refer the textbook if you want to get some more knowledge you can refer the internet magazines articles and so on even books okay so find out even more details about the diseases that carried out by these uh, mosquitoes okay then find out their details then find out how to minimize their you know like how to minimize the spread of mosquitoes okay you already know these things since our you know childhood age we are studying about these things gradually okay so find out these things even more i'm going to include two examples for you guys as a support as these assignments these should be done at your home okay by yourself that's why the assignments are given for you so you have to follow out these things and do it at your home by your own my dear children you can find out information by asking from others but however these preparation things should be done by you so i'll be providing two examples so that I, uh, it could it would it be a it would be a support for you guys then after you have to find out the other details okay so let's head on to see the first question uh, so the first question knows we have to find out diseases caused by mosquitoes disease vectors right disease diseases caused by uh, mosquitoes and their pathogens so dengue is a type of a disease which is spreaded by which is heavily getting spreaded by mosquitoes dengue pathogen of dengue is virus a virus okay so one by one i'll write question one 
dengu pathogen is a virus right pathogen is a virus then malaria malaria in malaria in malaria protozoa is the vector protozoa, protozoa is the pathogen vector is the mosquito protozoa is the pathogen okay so my first support for the first question is now finished so find out even more you have to find out even more examples then the second one collect information about fish species that prey on mosquito larva okay so i told you small fishes like guppy fish okay guppy fish a small fish that has a colorful body so this is for the first question this is for the second one second one guppy fish angel fish Then koi fish are some examples. Small koi fish, angel fish, guppy fish are some examples for the fish types, right? That depend on or that going to feed on larva, mosquito larva. Okay, they catch mosquito larva and take those larva as their food, especially guppy fish angel fish koi fish koi fish is somewhat larger but however smaller koi fish, uh, fish ko smaller koi fish are also going to depend on those mosquito larva okay when they are growing larger then it's difficult to see now so therefore it's uh, it's wise to grow fish like guppy fish smaller fish okay then the next one List the most suitable methods that can be used to control adult mosquito. So, control the adult mosquito. We need to control adult mosquito. My dear children, if no matter adult O, no matter adult O, any other stage of life, okay? Mosquitoes are mosquitoes. So, adult mosquito can be, you know that adult mosquito can be, the spread of adult mosquito or the population of adult mosquito can be controlled by destroying the mosquito larva. To, con to control or to destroy mosquito larva, we have to destroy places where the mosquito larva is going to breed okay so the best thing to do to control mosquitoes is to destroy in the places where the mosquito is going to or mosquito where the mosquito larva is going to behave or where the mosquito larva is going to thrive on so best thing to do is that by controlling or by killing or by destroying those places my dear children definitely we can control the population of mosquito okay so that's the best thing to control right that is the best thing or the best way to control the population of adult mosquito so we can write 
number three destroying destroying mosquito breeding places example empty cans cups polythene bags coconut shells coconut shells okay then my dear children you know this method is only being used if it is terrible terrible means if the population is too much then this method is used then the second method would be application of chemicals however it is not recommended right it's not a good choice but if we don't have any other option then we have to go for it if we don't have any other option then we have to go for it however i told you that using chemicals is not a good practice it's not a good sustainable practice as these chemicals might hurt the other insects other use usable insects right other valuable insects as well so therefore right it's important to not to use these chemical substances more often but however if we don't have any other choice then what to do then we have to use it now so using chemicals is also correct but if there is no alternative okay always go for the alternative where we don't use any where we don't use any other chemicals okay always keep the you know always try to keep or try to do these things without using chemical substances right so next one using chemical control if needed only if only needed so once again for third question also i wrote two answers my dear children as for as a support for you guys so finally what are the precautions that can be taken by you to prevent mosquito breeding precautions that can be used to stop mosquito breed breeding places so what are the precautions that you can take to stop mosquito breeding right if you take coconut shells plastic cups polythene bags we can reuse these things okay reuse polythene bags can be reused then my dear children coconut shells we can use coconut shells as a fuel okay as a fuel we can use it we can keep it in a dry place at our uh, home then we can use those things as a fuel in a wood stove okay we don't we have we uh, we should not throw these things to environment if we throw these things to the environment then what will happen during the rainy season these 
things may collect water and upon collecting water, mosquitoes will come and lay their eggs. Then the mosquitoes will come out from those places. So in order to stop these things, right, in order to stop, right, in order to stop mosquito breeding, we can do those precautions or we can follow that precaution. What is that precaution? Not throwing garbage like polythene, coconut shells, plastic tins, right? Then uh, metal tins to the environment, right? So we can, right? The first one. We'll use disposing not disposing not disposing Right. So, not disposing cans, cups, uh, tins to the environment. Right. Not disposing cans, tins, and cups to the environment. Another one. Drawing. 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 Small fish. Growing small fish in ponds. Example guppy fish. Example guppy fish. So, not disposing cans, tins and cups to the environment and growing small fish in ponds. Example, guppy fish. Okay. So, uh, in your garden, if you have a, a pond, then it's wise to grow at least one or two guppy fish. Okay. So, those larger fish will not be able to, if there are larger fish, then they won't be able to catch those small lava as they will not be able to observe those things and even though they could even though they can observe however they won't, they won't be able to catch them as they are too much uh, too much smaller right but however if you use a guppy fish then with the size of those fish those lava would be quite easier to catch okay Especially these fish are feeding on those larva or small insects, right? So therefore, it's important to grow at least two or three small fishes at a pond in order to stop the mosquito breeding, my dear children, okay? Right. So these are like two stages or two steps that we can follow to prevent mosquito breeding, right? Prevent mosquito breeding. Precautions that we can follow to prevent mosquito breeding. So my dear children, I wrote two examples or two, uh, you know, two methods each in each of the questions which were given in the assignment. You had to find out even more, okay? You had to find out even more good methods and precautions right then note them in your book like this or else in a paper not it not them like this then finally you can prepare the poster like given in the last question see design a poster about controlling mosquito breeding so you can 
you, you know you can design a paper uh, poster that shows the controlling of mosquito breeding okay so by collecting out these things you can do it at your home so my dear children please engage in this assignment at your home it will replenish your knowledge about the life cycles and as well as the knowledge about the disease ve vectors carried out by the mosquitoes okay so my dear children this is about the disease vectors then okay disease vectors then life cycle for conservation of biodiversity which is the final part of our lesson right final part of our lesson so some stages within the life cycles of some animal species have become threatened within their habitat some growth stages of some animals can be completely destroyed due to becoming victims of the animals unfavorable environmental conditions and scarcity of food so my dear children i told you that if you take the life cycles of organisms there is a one stage of life cycles which are like vulnerable vulnerable means threatened by the external factors those factors can be like this environmental conditions environmental conditions like droughts floods and so on environmental conditions then the scarcity of food lack of food due to competition and any other factor okay then predation predation is also a right it is also a main factor predation means that some other different kind of animal will uh, come and eat like half of the population predation sometimes the entire population will be eaten okay so predation also can be taken so due to like factors like these right there is a probability that there is a small bit of a probability that living organisms who are having certain life cycles will not be able to pass the threatened life cycle okay threatened life cycle life cycle stage will not be passed so in that case there is a higher probability of eradicating the entire species from the biosphere okay so it is given here some growth stages of animals can be completely destroyed so it's it can be completely destroyed due to these factors like victims of other animals unbearable environmental conditions and scarcity of food okay such stages can be considered as the sensitive stage of the particular creature so my dear children this stage which the vulnerability is going to be increase right the highest vulnerability can be observed is referred as the sensitive stage of the animal sensitive stage of the animal okay at this stage there is a high percentage of destroying entire civilization entire generation there is a possibility of destroying entire generation my dear children okay so this stage which entire generation may destroy or could destroy is referred as the sensitive stage of the life cycle sensitive stage of the life cycle so it's very important to identify sensitive stages of these organisms by looking at their life cycles by studying at their life cycles by that way we can protect those organisms how to protect within that stage of the life cycle we are providing a special protection for the uh, organisms so if you take organisms like fishes and turtles especially turtles right egg stage is the right egg stage is the most threatened stage of the life of turtles 
So you know that in Sri Lanka there are sanctuaries made for the well-being of the turtles, right? Turtle sanctuaries like in Hikadua. There are sanctuaries. So at those places, my dear children, these eggs are protected specially. And the organisms or the turtles are being bred. Bred means eggs are being stored in a protective facility and they are being allowed to hatch and small turtle uh, small turtles are being obtained. Then they are being released to the ocean very safely. So how would we know that the egg stage is the most threatened stage? It's because that turtle is going to lay eggs by observing their life cycle. We can say that we can come into a conclusion because the turtle is going to come to the shore and lay their eggs by digging small pits. So these eggs might get you know damaged when, pop, when people are wandering here and there. Then uh, when you know like small shapes will, co will come to the shore. Then uh, you know uh, sometimes uh, different types of organisms like monitor will come and eat these eggs. So like that way there are different cases, different different problems. So in order to avoid those cases, there are sanctuaries. So the officials or the officers who are at those sanctuaries is going to check in what places does the turtle is going to come, turtle is going to come and lay their eggs. So from those places, they are going to dig up the eggs and keep it in a more secure place. Then after, my dear children, what happens? Then after, they are going to release those small organisms to the ocean after they have been developed into a small organism, right? Then simply they are being released to the sea. Okay, so that's how, right? That's how the sanctuaries are going to work. Okay, I hope that you got an idea about these sanctuaries. So many children, there are sensitive stages of other animals as well. Okay, there are sensitive stages of other animals as well. If you take this, if you take insects, the larva stage is the, right, larval stage is the most sensitive stage. Like mosquitoes and for flies, the larval stage is the most sensitive stage. Then for fishers, eggs, right, for fishers, eggs. So I told you for the turtles, eggs, eggs and also young ones are also facing the same threat, young ones. Rather than the young ones, most of the times it's eggs, okay. Then for the frogs, eggs and tadpoles. For frogs, eggs and tadpoles, both. Most of the times, tadpoles and eggs too, okay, eggs too. So these are the sensitive stages of different species of organisms. Now, my dear children, what will happen if an entire species is going to loss? Then here, see, a species may face total extinction, total exist, exit, extinction if the sensitive stage is destroyed. Ah, now, if the sensitive stage of the organism completely getting destroyed, then my dear children, that species will get eradicated from our earth and it will extinct from our earth like the dinosaurs. Okay, is it good? Of course it is not, I told you that each and every, each and every living creature on our earth has the right to live. So therefore, we need to protect these organisms. It's our responsibility to protect these organisms, right? Controlling and killing or eradicating 
are two different, way more different procedures. Controlling means up to a certain level we are minimizing. Here we are discussing about the total extinction. That's a terrible word, a terrible process, right? Extinction means we can't even see a single organism. However, that might come true if we don't pay attention about their sensitive stages. So, scientists, uh, biological, uh, you know, scientists, right, especially uh, zoologists, now they are going to identify the animals who are being threatened by several cases, several issues, then they identify, they are identifying which stage of the life cycle is being threatened too much. Then at that life cycle, at that stage, my dear children, zoologists, what are they are going to do? They are going to protect the life cycle, this life stage of the life cycle and giving out the uh, you know, giving out well-developed organism to the environment. By that way, we can protect that particular organism. So, by protecting and by providing these different types of organisms to the environment, we can protect the, what? Biodiversity. Biodiversity means this, my dear children. What is that? Biodiversity means the differences between different different organisms who are living in our environment. So it's important to protect each and every species. So if this if this sensitive stage is being completely eradicated, then there is a chance of existence uh, extinction. So to avoid that, what do you have to do? You have to identify the threatened stage by studying the life cycle. Then we have to protect those organisms as they have also the right to live in our earth. Most of the times these organisms will be, you know, extinct or most of the times these organisms will be threatened because of the human activities. So it is our responsibility to save them. So studying life cycles of organisms helps to identify the sensitive stages of organisms and by that way we can provide a better protection for those organisms. So using those special protection methods we can protect these organisms who are being threatened and we can conserve the biodiversity in the environment. So this is how the studying of bio, this is how the studying of life cycle helps for the biodiversity conservation of the environment. Okay, right. So I hope that you got a good knowledge about the uses or the importance of studying life cycles of organisms. Right then, my dear children, we'll head on to see the next content. To protect the biodiversity, it is important to understand about the sensitive stages of the particular organisms. If uh, pay special attention about the sensitive stages of organism, it would be easier to conserve those organisms. Then it will help to protect the biodiversity. So, like I said, it's easy to protect these organisms within their sensitive stage. So by that way, we can protect the biodiversity as we are saving an entire species. Okay. So these are the users of studying life cycles of organisms. Okay. To help or to protect our biodiversity in the environment. Right. So with that, my dear children, we came to the end of our lesson. So this is the end of our lesson part regarding the life cycles. So I hope that you got a good knowledge about the life cycles of organisms. Okay. So before wind up, before winding up our lesson, we'll discuss the summary related to the theoretical parts that we studied. Okay. So first of all, 
we studied that every living organism has a life cycle with different stages each and every organism who is living in our earth right had a life cycle they had a life cycle they had a life cycle different stages okay then some organisms have significant differences in the stages of life cycle but some do not have significant differences in the stages so my dear children we studied that there are some organisms who undergo in metamorphosis and there are some organisms who do not undergo in the metamorphosis okay it can be complete or incomplete whatever no matter the metamorphosis type they undergo in metamorphosis like the organisms cockroach butterfly dragonfly cricket uh, then uh, you know mosquito so those are the organisms who undergo in metamorphosis means that if you take their life cycle their life cycle is somewhat complicated than the others so if you take organisms like rat dogs human monkey cat these organisms they have a simple life cycle means that they are uh, these organisms if you take the uh, you know beginning or uh, very beginning of their life they are similar to the adult and gradually they are becoming an adult only the size is the one which is getting changed their morphological features are pretty much similar to the adult so here there is no metamorphosis there are no any changes that is going to happen within the body structure right only the size is getting changed they are very similar to the size they are very similar to the appearance and the morphological features of the adult okay so there are some organisms who go through the metamorphosis and there are some organisms who do not grow uh, who do not show metamorphosis okay so we divided these two organisms and when we studied about the or the uh, we studied about these organisms separately when we are discussing the lesson then the next one the process with a sequence of morphological changes that some living organisms go through to become an adult is known as metamorphosis and uh, now the uh, next one is given the process with a sequence of morphological changes that some living organisms go through to become an adult is known as metamorphosis so if a certain organism go through with several you know stage changes with dramatical or with significant changes within their stages then that kind of a one is referred as a uh, you know metamorphosis okay that kind of one was referred as a metamorphosis so animals like frog butterfly dragonfly cockroach those guys are going on with the metamorphosis right metamorphosis so within if if a certain animal or if a certain organism is showing metamorphosis my dear children then from stage to a stage their morphological features are going to differ okay from one stage to another stage their morphological uh, features are going to differ right then metamorphosis with the significant morphological changes in the stages is known as a complete metamorphosis so complete metamorphosis means there should be significant changes with their life cycles right within their life cycle there should be significant changes actually we discussed that in order to have a complete metamorphosis there should be four stages most of the times there should be four stages right the larval stage pupal stage adult then the adult is the one who is going to lay eggs so eggs larva pupa then the adult the four stages of the complete metamorphosis however frog is also a type of an organism who is doing the complete metamorphosis but we can observe only three stages right what are the three stages x tadpole and the frog okay then 
metamorphosis without significant morphological changes in the stage is known as incomplete metamorphosis so if there are no any significant morphological changes in the stages then my dear children it is referred as the incomplete metamorphosis if there are no significant changes like if you take the cockroach right after eggs are being hatched the nymph which is coming out from the eggs is similar to the cockroach adult cockroach however there are slight changes like the adult is having wings but the nymph is not so like that way there are simple changes but however their body structure is similar to the adult in that case that kind of a metamorphosis is referred as an incomplete metamorphosis incomplete metamorphosis so cockroach dragonfly cricket right cicada these organisms white ant right so these organisms they carry or they undergoes in incomplete metamorphosis incomplete metamorphosis then flowering plants to go through different stages from growth of the seed till becoming an adult plant in this in its life cycle so we next uh, next after this after discussing the morphological features and after discussing the life cycles of animals my dear children we came to study about the life cycles of a plant so i told you that life cycle of a plant is also way more similar to the life cycle of a human similarity is that we are also developing in the same way like flowering plants so plant is going to produce a seed then seed a seedling the seedling is going to produce into a mature plant okay so if you take the seedling the plantlet plantlet is way more similar to the mature plant in appearance only the size is the one which is getting changed however if you take the life cycle of these plants right this life cycle also having different different stages like us like humans then the creatures that harm the crops and the harvest of human is called as pests so my dear children the creatures that harms the crops and the harvest of the human is called pests so creatures creatures and plants there are plants also so these things that harms the plantation or the uh, or that harms the agricultural purposes of a human being is called as a pest right it is called as a pest so we studied about several pests red coconut red we will fruit fly and so on okay for a successful pest control there should be a knowledge about the harmful stage of the particular pest so for a successful pest control there should be a knowledge about the harmful stage of the particular pest so in order to in order to control the pest in a certain environment or in a certain agricultural place we should have to get some idea about the life cycle of the pest by that way we can get the sensitive stage of the pest and we can control the pest at the con uh, at the controlling part or at the sensitive stage okay so it's important to have a good knowledge about their life cycles to identify the sensitive stage of the particular pest by that way we can control the uh, bad defects given out by the pest to the particular plantation or to the agricultural lands right then it is important to protect the sensitive stages of the life cycle of organisms for the conservation of biodiversity so i told you that at the final uh, as the final step it's very important to protect organisms each and every organism who is living in our biosphere they have the right to live right they have the right to live like us they also are the they are, they are also a part of this biosphere like us so they also have the right to live 
we don't have the authority to kill all and eradicate these organisms from our biosphere so my dear children it's our responsibility to protect the bio biodiversity within our biosphere we it's important to let all the organisms live in peace and harmony within the environment or within the biosphere so controlling and eradicating are two different things so we have to if there are certain organisms who is being threatened with several issues or with several human activities it's our responsibility to identify their life cycles study their life cycles and to protect these organisms at the sensitive stage because most of the times sensitive stage is the reason right sensitive stage is the reason of threatening or the reason of eradicating these organisms from our world so it's important to study about those sensitive stages and protect these organisms at the sensitive stage better examples are types of fish then turtles okay then finally in conservation of endangered species is important to right in con conservation of endangered species so once again who are these endangered species endangered species means like i said a kind of an species who has been threatened right who has been threatened for the ext extinction means that near in near future they might they have uh, they might have a chance to extinct their population is very less in the environment so they have a good chance right they have a better chance in extinction so it's not good so we have to protect these endangered species how to protect endangered species it's important to consider about the sensitive stage of the endangered organism so by identifying that uh, endangered by identifying the sensitive stage of this endangered organism we can protect the particular endangered organism by protecting the sensitive stage like protecting the eggs of turtle we can protect the turtle population right turtle is an organism who is been threatened by several human activities and other facts especially with the human activities so it is an endangered species so that's why even in sri lanka there are turtle sanctuaries in order to protect the population of turtles right so how we protect those guys it's really simple we are going to protect these organisms by using their sensitive stage at the sensitive stage we are providing an extra protection so by that way we are releasing these matured organisms to the necessary environment by that way we can keep the keep that population as a constant okay so using those technology or using that kind of a process we can protect the biodiversity okay as each and every organism have the same right to live on our earth so these are the important key important things that we learned within this lesson my dear children so we have discussed several things related to the lesson right and we have finished all the theoretical parts and finally we discussed about a simple summary related to the lesson so my dear children now it's time to discuss several questions related to the lesson part however we'll be discussing these questions within our next chapter so stay with me till the end of the lesson now it's time to discuss right questions questions are pretty much important for the lesson my dear children that's how you memorize all the things which you have already learned so it's really important to follow up with the questions right so like in the like as as usual my dear children we'll be starting with textbook questions and later on i'll be giving some extra questions for you guys to answer okay so let's meet you 
okay i'll meet you with the next chapter in order to discuss the questions related to the lesson 12th lesson life cycles of the organisms so till then it's time to say goodbye